So you folk, congratulations. How are you feeling? It's been a couple of weeks now. Oh, I suppose you had the men winning their pick up at the weekend too, so that probably brought all the memories flooding back in. Yeah, it's been a mad few weeks. Obviously, we won the FA Cup. Um, that was incredible. That was a week, well, two weeks ago now. So in a weird way with football, you have these moments that are like the highlights of your career. And then a few days later, it almost feels like it's on to the next thing. So I've enjoyed being asked the questions about it because it kind of brings it back, all the good stuff. And then obviously the boys, the men's team won it at the, at the weekend as well. So that's quite special with the women and the men holding the FA Cup at the same time. I'm sure there's a statistic about whether that's the first time that's happened. Um, or whether it's not, but it definitely feels really special. And then one, two, skip a few, a few days later, we're back in camp, um, got our next round of games on this qualifying campaign. And so it's all the good stuff, all excitement, all action happening, starting with Sweden at the Aviva on Friday. How do you kind of keep yourself grounded when something like that happens? Because obviously you had your last WSL game afterwards, which wasn't great and then you have to come into camp and get yourself mentally prepared for two of the biggest games. Yeah, it, it sounds like a question that, how do you keep yourself grounded? It sounds like a question that you'd really need to pay a lot of attention to, but football just has a funny way of bringing you right back down. It's not something that, that you need to sort of, kind of say to yourself or intellectualize or you know try and speak to yourself about because a few days later, you do something rubbish in training and you're reminded of how much you know you need to improve or you win the FA Cup the following week you know you have a really really disappointing match um, against a team in your in your men's stadium at Old Trafford for example so yeah funny football has a really really uh, humbling way of doing that to you the best thing and the easiest thing it's like something happens good bad take it, soak it in, and then it, it's literally just on to the next one. And how are you feeling generally from men's camp? There seems to be quite a nice vibe around from just a few players that we've talked to. Yeah, I agree, and I've said that. I don't know, this is my first time coming into a camp right at the end of a season. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's maybe got something to do with it. You've finished your league campaign. Um, it's a bit sunnier. So there's not the pressure of if you're getting relegated or if you're going to win the league or where you're sitting in the league. That's sort of done and dusted. Maybe that's a little bit to play, I'm not sure. But this, this team always has good vibes and it's always quite a close, closely knit unit. So probably a little bit of both. Um, but I can definitely feel the good energy. Uh, people seem quite pleased to be in here, which is a great start. And in terms of Sweden then specifically, how are you feeling about those games? I think it's going to be a really excited couple, of, exciting couple of games. Unique in in the fact that we're playing the same team back to back, so it's kind of be quite interesting to see how that develops. Like from the second the second game, following on from the first, um, we shouldn't underestimate Sweden. They're a brilliant side with top top draw players, um, and so yeah, really exciting. I'm sure Eileen will have us in now. Obviously, we only came into camp last night, managed to get some dinner and go to bed. But I'm sure Eileen will have us in all the tactical meetings, all the coaching meetings very shortly to make sure that we're on the same page and to kind of establish with us what, what the exact plans are and how we're going to try and, you know, put on a performance and hopefully get a result. How do you feel about the back-to-back -back nature of the games? Because, you know, sometimes you have performances, like say the France one or even the England one, where we play really well in that second half and we just don't quite get over the line, but you almost feel like, oh, when we had another chance to go at them next week, we might have got something or we might have learned something. How are you, like, are you happy enough about the back-to-back -back, or do you prefer having that bit of space between the games? I think I'm happy about the back-to-back -back because I think that, like you say, you do get a chance to take anything from the first game and put it into the second game. It's, it, you know, even in domestic campaigns, you always, you feel like you're always learning so much in a game, but then you're playing a different team the next time. That's the same mostly with international. So it's a slightly unique challenge, actually, playing a team really, um, like, really closely again after you've just played them. And so as, a, as someone that likes to reflect and try and grow, try and build, I think playing the same team again can be quite useful. Uh, Eva, 
I'm going to ask you to go through this with a bit of a coach's eye because I know you're you're doing your your A license and you're going through your badges and everything. The, the, the first two games against France and England, Ireland defended really well for the majority of those games, but they gave up early goals. Like how can you fix that or amend that and make sure that doesn't happen again on Friday night? I think it's a always a balancing act when you're playing really, really world-class opposition of what you're going to bring as a team, what are our strengths, what do we do really well, what is it um, that suits our group of players, and then also respecting the strengths of the opposition. The teams that we played, as in France and England, in the last window, um, there was really different stories across the same game. We had portions of the game where we really went at them, especially in the second half against England at the Aviva. We felt that it was us uh, with the impetus trying to chase something. We felt that the crowd was behind us. But the challenge is to see how do you pitch yourself against these teams across the 90 minutes? What's sort of sustainable? Um, how much can you really go for it without opening yourself up? And I think I've answered your question by bringing more questions than answers. And that's why I'm only a budding coach and not actually a coach. Um, Eileen is great at bringing all of those questions onto the same page um, and giving us a real clear and succinct way of how we're actually going to play. Well, we can talk about formations and tactics and all that, but the thing with these elite teams, and we'll be the same again on Friday and again Tuesday against Sweden, the athleticism, the power, the pace and the movement, like, it's so difficult to deal with that over 90 minutes. Is that the big step up, not necessarily the natural ability that they have, but just the intensity that they seem to bring into these matches and it, it never lets up. Yeah, there's definitely, there's, there is definitely that. I think actually sometimes if you know that an opposition um, has great, great attacking strengths, you can always drop more players under the ball, for example. The most difficult thing against world-class world opposition is how clinical they are. They only sometimes need one moment and one chance to turn the whole game on its head. And so that, that can be really draining because you know you have to concentrate 110% for the whole game because you can, get, um, you can get punished. You can get punished so easily. And so that's the challenge as well. How about your own role within those games? Was it a wider role on, in, the, in that back line? Um, how did you find that? I know you've done it a lot through your career, but yeah. particularly on the left, was it, did it take some adjustment and getting used to it? Yeah, definitely. It's a question that everybody has asked me about playing in different positions, different roles, and everyone tries to pin me down. It's like, where do you feel most comfortable? Where do you feel uncomfortable? And I'm not one of those players that has a real strong view on the exact position that they want to play. If I'm on the pitch, I don't really mind where I get asked to play. As long as I can have a really good go and get stuck in, you know, I'll go for it. Um, but when I look back over the last couple of camps, I suppose, I have played in different positions, which is unusual in that the previous few years to that, I'd kind of just played centre-half, for example. And so I found myself in left wing back, in right wing back, um, sometimes in the middle. But the truth is, in every position, there's, for me personally, there's something of my game I can bring a bit more. So if I'm in a wide position, I can do more 1v1 defending. If I'm in the middle, I can get on the ball more. And so it's kind of just like balancing that, um, dialing something up, maybe trying to, you know, if I'm right footed and I'm playing on the left, I might not be whacking balls down the line on my left, for example. Um, and so for me, what's a given is I'll try my best wherever I play and then it's for the manager to decide where that might fit in her team. So that's for Eileen to pick. Um, and I'm quite clear that I'll, I'll give anything a go. You've really had to earn this run of games with, with Ireland. You've really had to wait and, and bide your time. You were so unlucky with injuries. That it's come to you now, because you're an older player and more mature, like, do, do you think that you to look at these opportunities different than when you're a younger player? In other words, do you think you save it a bit more? smell the roses, you're able to walk out of the Aviva and maybe just take all this in a little more than if I had a come a few years sooner? Yeah, that is a great question, 100%. The older I get, the more that I realise that moments that fall in your favour are not actually a given. 
when I was younger and the good things would happen and it would sort of fall in my favour, I wouldn't really reflect and have a think that that's actually quite unique and quite special. And as I get older, I'm definitely like, as you say, smelling the roses, savouring it and thinking, you know, I'm, I'm not far enough along the other side of injuries to forget that things can kind of switch up very easily. And so when I get through a game fit, I think, you know, thank you. I am blessed. You know, here I am. I'm fit. I'm healthy. I'm, away to come, I'm, away, I'm able to come away with a team that are really close knit. Um, brilliant group of girls and that is enough for me so whatever that looks like on the pitch that I guess that's why that's partly why I don't have strong opinions about where I play because I think as long as I'm fit and I'm happy and I'm healthy what more can what more can you ask for these extra things are just like almost like afterthoughts like how much did you play in a game or where did you play the main thing is that you get to be involved just one last one for me, but will you use this week as a chance to maybe quietly get in Denise's ear about it? <laughs> well, Denise is a great player. She's a really, really good player. Look, as players, we're not privy nearly as much as, believe it or not, we're not privy nearly as much as you think we are to speculation about where a player might be. For me, the more Irish people we could get into a club like Manchester United, the better. Um, but these are like personal and private things. Um, but you can tell by my smile that I wouldn't be averse to that, of course, of course. Good, okay, thank you, cheers.